Welcome back to our home. Today I'm going to be working on an old bookshelf that I found on the side of the road. We went out and took a bike ride as a family and we were just riding around the town. I looked down one of the side streets and I happened to see some wooden furniture sitting on the side of the road. And as soon as I got close enough to see what it was, I was in shock. Guys, check this out. Look at this old lawyer's bookshelf. You don't see these often, and you certainly don't see them on the side of the road often. It's basically a modular, I guess we'll call it, bookshelf system. It pops apart like this. Here's the top. So when this was on the ground, I just saw all these pieces laying on the ground. Now, at first glance, I thought the top was pretty trashed. The veneer was looking bad. It was peeling up a little bit and it had a lot of damage. But after cleaning it, a simple wet rag, wipe the dust down, take a look at it. Look how dirty it was. Guys, it's looking a lot better than I expected it would. After looking at it, I realized that this top is fully savable. I'm going to start by sanding it down. Very lightly. We don't want to burn through the veneer. We just want to smooth out the surface and get that rough finish cleaned up. The top sanded off so beautifully. I wish you could feel it through the video because it is so smooth already and we haven't even begun really to finish it. There are a couple of little peeling veneers at the end, so we're gonna go ahead and glue those, clamp them, and wait for that to dry. While that top veneer is drying, we're gonna start working on the next sections, which are in really good shape. These also cleaned up very nicely with just water. When you have an antique piece like this, you don't want to go crazy with cleaning solutions and harsh soaps. Take it easy, start with water and a clean rag. Now that I'm looking at it, I'm mostly going to focus my attention on the back panels because the back panel is made of plywood and the old plywood has delaminated. So it's a three ply plywood, which means there's three layers of wood in it. And those layers are starting to come apart. Some of them are worse than others, but I think we can fix them all. So I'm going to go ahead and start working on gluing the layers back together. It's really quite easy. It would be easier if I took the plywood right off the back of the bookshelf and finished it laying flat. But I'm hesitant to do that. I'm going to try to repair it all in place on the back of the bookshelf. So we'll see how it goes. So what I'm doing is dripping glue as deeply as I can into these layers of plywood. We want it to get down into every place possible. So it might look like I'm going overboard with the glue, but I just want to make sure it's going to get everywhere. The excess can squeeze out and we'll take care of that. So I got a ton of glue in there. We're going to mash it together a few times, get all the air out, make sure the glue has good spread, 
and then I'm gonna clamp it together using blocks of wood and a ton of clamps. Even pressure is important here. The wood and the, all the clamps, that really helps balance out the pressure and get a good flat squeeze on these panels. Guys, this is a slow process. It's gonna take me a few days to do this, just cycling out, waiting for glue to dry, and using my clamps piece by piece. Got a couple more spots gluing up and drying, and I am almost done with this process. So what I wanna do is start working on one important part of this whole bookshelf that is missing, and that is the base. When I found this bookshelf, it didn't have the base with it, which should have just been a simple little structure with legs that sits underneath to raise these up off the floor. Since it doesn't have one, I'm gonna build one. We're gonna keep it simple and try to make something that'll go along with this bookshelf and looks like it belongs with it. I'm almost done prepping my pieces for this base. I picked up some oak wood and I got the lightest oak wood I could find. Most of this is red oak, but it was very red in the store. I've, luckily I found some nice light pieces that will match the cabinet better. And this is a really simple base we're making. So this is all it is. Some basic one by fives. And then I cut out this leg out of a two by two. It's pretty simple, rounded the edges, and I just notched these two sides here. I don't know if you'll see that. And you'll see why, just the way they hook together, it'll make it look cleaner when I attach these together. All right guys, I think I'm ready. I just made the last piece, which is a piece of pine, but I put a long tongue on it. And this is actually part of the connection where they interlock on the back of the cabinets when you stack them up they join like that. So I wanted to make this for the back piece. Now I have to go ahead and start pocket holing all these and getting them ready to assemble. So I'm gonna get the pocket holes done and we'll be right back. I bought these, these are for hardwood, fine threaded. Okay, so this is where the legs come in to play. Where I cut those notches in the back side of it, like I was saying, it's gonna catch that board. It's gonna make it a lot easier to pocket hole and it's gonna look so clean when it's done. I think you have sawdust all over your nose. Yeah. Good? Okay, I'm feeling like we're getting somewhere now. We can put this back piece on. And this one, since it's facing the wall, I can just screw it in from this side. So there's the base of the bookshelf that goes underneath. I know it looks simple and it took me a long time to build such a simple thing, but uh, sometimes the small details matter. And I think 
it was worth making sure we got this one right. Guys, we are finally ready to get this thing stained up. And I just want to show you, I'm bring, I brought out the lid. Remember we started with this and we sanded it down. We got it super smooth, glued down the veneer. Look how nice it's looking. And check this out. It interlocks with the base and it's locked in. That means we built the base right and it looks awesome. So while I'm staining this, I'm gonna to try to get some stain into here to bring the color back into that piece. Maybe I'll actually start with this and then we'll get it out of the way. Well, the good thing is if this doesn't look right with the other shelves, we can still darken it up as long as we don't seal it. As long. Is the other one darker that we got? I don't know, I just thought you'd had it figured out. Obsidian. All the other ones looked too, like, just too dark. This, though, is clearly a bit light. Guys, that other one was too light. I'm not happy with it. So we're trying a different color. We're gonna get to wiping this down and hopefully this looks good when it's done. Does the neighbor have to mow every time we do this? Yeah. Guys, I gotta go wash my hands, but let me tell you, I was getting impatient and I couldn't wait to see if the color was right. So I brought this cabinet out and take a look. This is still drying. I still have to shellac it, but I am so happy with this. This is looking so clean. The cabinet locks on perfectly. It feels really rigid. This is so cool. We're gonna let that dry. We're gonna get it shellacked. I'm not gonna talk too much because it's echoey in here. We're just gonna get some felt on the bottom of this base. Perfect. Let's show the finish we got on here. It's nice. Is that cool? Look at the color in that wood. And let's see the top. Guys, the top came out, I mean, honestly too nice because it's not gonna match the cabinet. It's so shiny. I did a good job on that shellac. You can see the oak has its oak grain texture, but it came out pretty good. Now the backs of these, they don't look good. And I could take my time, sand them down, clean them up, and maybe I'll do that later, but I wanna see how this looks. is like totally shiny compared to the rest. I know. I'm thinking about... Doling it up a little? Yeah. And I can. It's not hard. A little fine steel wool and you can take the... Yep. The shine wow. off it. You would never know that you made that base. Let me back up and look. Because it just goes so well with the unit. Oh, it does look good. Well, there it is, guys. This is looking so good, but it's not done yet. I do have a little more cleanup to do. I have a lot of lint on the glass because I use some linty rags to clean them. We're gonna clean the glass again. I'm gonna keep working on this wood. See, I don't wanna restore every piece of it and I could make this whole thing shiny and new looking. I think I'm gonna leave the original finish alone and just touch up all the little scuffs and marks because there are some scuffs. 
I kind of just like the natural old patina of the cabinet, so I don't want to mess with it too much. We have a stable cabinet with a base, and the top, which I thought was really bad, turned out to be really good. And I can tone that shine down. I can buff it off with some very fine steel wool, dull it up, and then, you know, polish it maybe even further to get a little sheen back.